Hey there, Internet. Our Felix Finch here. And guess what? That's right. It's time for another episode of Underground Lucha Things. This episode, season one, episode 24, Trios Champions from uh, April 22nd, 2015. And you know what? This show, I retroactively look at Lucha Underground, a show that despite my passion for this industry, I did not watch at the time it came out because who had the El Rey Network? But you know what? I'm not al I'm not alone here guiding me through this because she actually watched it when it happened is my good friend, the one, the only Angie FN loose cannon from Midcard Mana. Angie, how are you doing there this lovely Hawaiian evening? I am good. Thank you so much again for having me. It is always fun and I've been looking forward to specifically this episode for a long time. Yeah, uh, Trios Champions, I wonder what's going to happen in this show. But you know what? We get a weird opening here, because last time we got some strange Batman opening with Aerostar. <laughs> this time around, we get like a Batman Begins opening with Black Lotus. We see her writing a yeah! diary. We see her writing a diary entry stating that it's been eight weeks of training, which I didn't look back to see if it's been eight weeks since she was kidnapped. So uh, I'm just going to take them at their word that it's been eight weeks. And much like, <laughs> and it turns out that much like any Jedi, she must learn to control her anger. And we see Black Lotus fighting a bunch of silhouettes using a lot of moves that I frankly... Not seen in Lucha Libre. It doesn't look like she's really learning the Lucha Libre style much. When the yeah. lights come on, Dragon Azteca is there to fight her. And he lets her know that an opponent won't allow her to catch her breath. And he deems her not ready as he easily outgrapples her. And she's left there just still an angry woman. Angie, how'd you like this opening? I've been waiting for this too. Been waiting for a lot of things from this episode, uh, not just the the trios match we talked about, but uh, the return ish, or the sort of update on Black Lotus, uh, which I know for a really long time was a mystery to you. So I'm excited to see. I was excited to see a little bit more information about what's been going on with her, because I I'm so excited for 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 more Black Lotus stuff, and I'm so excited to to know your reactions on them. Because, like, that as unfolding was one of my other favorite things about Lucha Underground when I first watched it. I am quite interested in where this Black Lotus thing is going. And like I said, my big criticism is she spoke Lucha Libre. She was not doing Lucha Libre in, the, in that fight. I didn't see her hit a single Rana, not a little bit of a tope. <laughs> <laughs> there was no fun stuff off the ropes. I I mean we'll we'll see we're gonna we'll see how she ends up as a luchadora. I assume I assume she's not just gonna be stuck in these uh, Kill Bill sort of situations or like I said in this case Batman uh, Batman Begins. But we do speaking of ladies we get sexy star opening the show taking on Pentagon Junior and off the bat people aren't following the rules of the heels and the baby faces. They are just trading off, say, uh, saying, uh, chanting Zero Mero and Sexy Star. Which, I mean, it's a good thing that uh, Pentagon Jr. has a four syllable chantable, uh, has a four syllable chantable uh, slogan. Because, yeah, Pentagon Jr. It's like a five. What? I guess if you would, Pentagon Jr. But then that's taking over someone else's. <laughs> Someone else is clapping. Yeah, it's a little too. It's a, it's a little too complicated as far as rhythm goes to do that and expect wrestling fans to follow. <laughs> yeah, we we need it divisible by four <laughs> or three. Three or three or four. Three or four. <laughs> you could always go pentagon, but you already have sexy star, so it's better to do the four. Cero miedo, sexy star. Yeah, we will do two if you suck. Yeah, they're cheering loudly for both, and Sexy Star gets to use her speed. Though Pentagon Jr. is able to find a way to easily take advantage. 
Sexy Star is aggressive with their offense, but Pentagon, again, quickly is able to take over, aiming to hurt Sexy. But Sexy sexy does scare me when she tries to like do a flipping senton through the ropes and it looks like she gets caught up going through and like almost short almost falls short of pentagon uh, so that was a bit of a scary spot and we see that mystery man in the front row again whom they still haven't named and sexy star manages to get a surprise win with a lung blower leaving an irate pentagon in the middle of the ring. I mean, I guess it makes sense storyline wise to give this first win, um, or first significant win, I guess you should say to sexy star here. Um, yeah, I was very, uh, I don't know if, if I should say interested or proud, but I was uh, surprised that the spot that made me cringe the most was from sexy star instead of Pentagon. Because Pentagon has has several times in his matches where where I'm watching it and I'm just like ah, it's like I just I just want to cushion your fall with my body. Pentagon, I'm scared for you. Looks like you necked yourself there, man. I'm so, like it makes me anxious sometimes. But then Sexy Star, which I thought was actually also really cool, because usually those death defying sorts of moves you only see from men. So getting to see a woman hit it again is very much within her larger storytelling character narrative of the being being unafraid to fight the boys game as it were yeah and we cut to johnny mundo backstage and he's doing some weird parkour weightlifting like lifting himself with one leg and one bar while supine but having a dumbbell to press in his opposite hand is what it, it it is it is a rather unique workout he's doing, and uh, he's interrupted by Alberto El Patron, and Patron pretty much mocks him for his loss last week, and starts talking about his inability to grasp the bra grasp the brass ring, and he like uh -huh. is, is mocking his like inability to defeat Prince Puma or get the big wins where they count, and I am getting motion sick because this whole time the camera is spinning around both of them. Uh, sometimes Patron is walking in the opposite direction of the camera. Sometimes they're just staying still and the camera is still circling them. It is very uncomfortable to watch. Very, It's very disorienting for sure. Um, which I thought was maybe by design. Uh, well, I mean, of course it was, but I thought it was maybe more of like a... Not necessarily a, a shout out to El Patron as far as the kind of uh, scheming person he is, but that's kind of what I got, where it's sort of like, you know, you can't ever really be sure about Alberto El Patron. And, you know, I mean, not to, not to break kayfabe too much, but that proved to be true in a lot of things in real life as well. So, um, <laughs> Uncomfortable yeah. noises. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I felt that that was very much a, like, He's a disorienting person, so you need to make sure that you're always on your guard around him because you really never know. He might not necessarily be the heel at that moment. He might not be the bad guy in your story at that moment, but you never really know. That was what that was the read I guess I got on that choice. That very, very sort of disorienting choice. Um, <laughs> because it's been established that Johnny Mundo at this moment, right, is uh, a baby face. You know, he's he's proven time and time again, and it's not necessarily to say that he won't ever be a heel in Lucha Underground, but as of right now, he's pretty solidly a baby face. And you know that this is the person that you're supposed to root for, you're supposed to trust, that he's going to act honorably and do the right thing. Whereas El Patron came in as a big hero, but his intentions seem a little bit more obscured no i i agree and it's yeah yeah that was very disorienting to watch and yeah they they're really playing tweener with both of them not really putting telling you where their loyalties really lie i mean the loyalties lie with themselves that's all we see but you know what it's time for the finals it's time for king cuerno cage and tejano to take on Son of Havoc, Ivelisse, and Angelico, 
and the mech, Big Rick and Kill Shots, to find out who will be our first ever Lucha Underground Trios champions. And this match is an elimination three-way. Uh, Kill Shot, Cage, and the Helico start the match for their teams. And the big man is just taking advantage of his size. The Cage, Cuerno, and Tejano team is clearly on the heel side of the game against both teams. Uh, Mac is definitely super over with his pure athleticism. The match does descend into absolute chaos outside. And uh, though Angelico knocks Te Naturally. Yeah, Angelico knocks Tejano into maybe Davari. And maybe Davari gets up and starts <laughs> beating around Tejano, just throwing him into the ring, throwing him into the chairs. Vampiro is rightfully on commentary asking where security is. Because, yeah, <laughs> you just have a an alleged fan beating the crap out of one of your wrestlers, so I assume we're going to have to get some kind of payoff to that a little later. That was that was weird. Like, it was certainly a choice. And because of the beatdown by a fan, Killshot is able to deliver a double stop to Tejano and eliminate that team. So the pure heels are out of the way. Comes down to Big Rick's crew versus the Love Triangle. And Angelico is taking all the heat <laughs> while Ivelisse is injured outside the ring. And Son of Havoc hasn't been back in commission for a while. It is weird to see that because of the way this match was done with the elimination, the teams are actually on the same side of the ring. <laughs> They're both, both teams are opposite hard cam. So the audience is behind them. And yeah, Ivelisse again, like I said, injured on the outside. Uh, she tries to jump onto both Rick and the Mac, uh, but she gets caught by them. Although Son of Havoc is able to dive on them on the outside. And then Helico gets the win with a buckle bomb on kill shot to win the match and become the first ever Lucha Underground Trios champions. Or so we think, dumb, 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 but first. <laughs> but wait. <laughs> but wait, there is more because Dario comes out of his office with a look of absolute confusion and disgust on his face. And though, uh, but apparently they haven't won the titles yet. No, because a new challenger enters. There's one more team in this tournament, personally, ch personally chosen. The final boss. Yes, personally chosen by Cueto. Yes, Sephiroth has now changed into his second form, or I guess third form if we're going Final Fantasy here. <laughs> and you know what, Cueto? He wants some excitement. So not only is this team coming in completely fresh, but they're coming completely fresh with a no disqualifications... Uh, with a no disqualifications... Uh, uh, simulation. Yeah, thank you. That's the word I was looking for. And who can it be now? <laughs> who can it be now? It's the crew. So when we come back from commercial, the bell rings and the crew gets outside to beat down the prior winners. And everyone's getting beaten all around the temple. I mean, and it goes left on the top of the temple somewhere. Eva Lise is isolated in the ring with Bale and Cortez Castro, and Son of Havoc tries to make a save, but becomes a new target. And uh, unfortunately, Cortez Castro gets back to choking out Eva Lise with a kendo stick, while Son of ha ha Havoc and Hilk are being beaten all around the temple. And at one point, it looks like Son of Havoc gets dropped right. Like there's supposed to be a suplex, but it looks like he gets dropped right on his dome into the lip of a platform, <laughs> which uh, not not very fun. Yeah. Um. Angelico manages to revive manages to revive himself and deliver a huge cross body to Bale and Castro from the top of the temple. Uh, it's a hell of beautiful. Yeah, it, it, beautiful move. Yeah, it reminds it was me spectacular. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when uh, Johnny Mundo jumped from that same spot to get in the ring to make a rescue for Puma. A hell yeah. hell of a comeback for the team. Evilise gets the kendo stick and starts beating down the crew. Uh, while hopping on one no foot. disqualifications. <laughs> yeah. And it allows Son of Havoc and Angelico to hit a double stomp shooting star combo for the win and become the inaugural champions with some very sexy belts for realsies this time. Angie, I've been talking for a while. 
Tell us what you thought about the show and in particular this match. Yes. So I so I've been really excited about this reveal of this whole storyline payoff uh, since we first started talking about Lucha Underground because I think I was on the first episode that I was on there was a Son of Havoc match and Helico wasn't introduced yet but there was a Son of Havoc Ivelisse match and I was just like or, or Son of Havoc with Ivelisse on his side I guess I should say match and I just remember being like oh good the uh, and Helico hasn't been introduced yet so you can see this whole thing play out because I I'm not really I was really and i'm still not very good at remembering what episode what happens in uh but once i start seeing i'm like oh that's right then this and this and that and this um but yeah so i've been super excited for this payoff because of the fact that you know as we first started talking about this we all we both commented i'm sure a lot of other people thought oh well you know this this trio's team is just gonna completely explode and it's going to lead into a match a triple threat match between the three of them to see which one you know gets to be the star but then no instead they all came together and were able to win and especially in this match we start to see the teamwork build even more you see angelico with that huge save to evilise that she was alone in the ring you see Angelico, Ivelisse, and Son of Havoc really come together because now they feel like they do have a chance at winning this, this whole tournament. They start to be more willing to work with one another rather than focusing on their animosity that was between them. So I thought this was just excellent. And I I thought that the, the crew twist, quote-unquote, wasn't much of a twist because they were pretty conspicuously absent from the entire tournament. So to me, it was it, like, even even then, I was just like, oh, wait, where's the crew? And then when Dario came out and I was like, oh, I bet, I'll bet they're going to have to fight the crew. And then it happened. Um, so yeah, it, it was, to me, I liked that it was no real surprise. At least to me, it was no real surprise because I felt like, you know, it was very video game for lack of a better word. Like I said, the final boss, you know, you, you have all these trials and tribulations and obstacles that get in your way, whether it be in the very beginning, their inability to work together because of the, the conflict between them to facing teams that seem to be more cohesive units or even facing teams that were just, bigger and stronger than all three of them combined and then finally you know through the power of tag team friendship they're able to overcome the odds and win and then of course the final boss this well-established trios team that have been working together for longer than any of the other trios teams comes in and really puts them to the test and this is after their bruised battered and broken after they've already fought an elimination match to beat all of the other teams they get this like i said and i keep going back to the f sort of final boss sort of thing they get this final boss this final test to see if they're really worthy and they're they pass it so it's, to me this win not only being great because i love trios tag teams but this win and this whole story had such a great payoff that it was just, to me, this was the most satisfying title win thus far. Not like there's been a whole lot of title wins uh, in Lucha Underground, but this is the most satisfying title win thus far. And honestly, probably my one of my favorite title wins in Lucha Underground. Yeah, this, this had a lot of, this had a lot going for it. And yeah, it was kind of funny watching, uh, when they won the title, it was like, oh, wait, there's 10 minutes left of this show. And it's like, ah, nice. And funny enough, I did not see the crew being the people that would be brought in on his uh, special account. So I thought that was a nice surprise. And I think they turned them babyface here. 
uh, that's that at least seems what it appears to be and yeah something uh they we don't really mention here is Ivelisse now is a woman holding a major championship in a major promotion or in a contracted promotion it's always weird to figure out how to like include that but yeah so so we see that you know there's no real there's no real standard set. Granted, yeah, we saw Sexy Star and Evil East in the in the uh, Aztec Warfare, but now that we actually see Evil East holding a title, that does open up the possibility for more, assuming there's a larger women's division at some point in the future. Uh, again, uh, the, it was interesting having Sexy Star versus Pentagon Jr. I feel like that's got to continue more, especially because of the anticlimactic way that finished. But, you know what? Very cool. Very cool all around. And let's see what happens with Patron and Mundo. Because this pissing contest is kind of... This this proverbial dick measuring contest is getting kind of interesting. But you know what, Angie? It's late. How about you let everybody know where they can find you? All right. I'll keep it short and sweet this time. So I'm on two shows based on... Invite you mid card mono over here on the big island with my tag team partner Sam Kelly, the wrestling connoisseur, and uh, Valley Owl Collective's Ringside, which is with a, several of the guys that are also part of Nerd Watch over on Maui Island. And you can find me here, youtube.com slash Frisco Flame. You can find me on the audio of the, you can find us on audio as well by looking up Underground Lucha Things, our favorite podcast app. You can, uh, you know, subscribe subscribe on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash Frisco Flame. You can go to FriscoFlame.com, get my shirts. You can get my pins if you go to my Etsy shop. Just look up Frisco Flame. And you know what, everybody? For Angie, I'm pointing the right direction this time. Check it out. For <laughs> myself. Peace out, party peoples. I will see you next time on Underground Lucha Things. Amen.